Hello everyone and welcome to Gina's video blog. Today is February 1st, 2011, and I'm going to actually be doing two separate blogs today, but they're going to have they're going to have the same date because I'm doing them today. And I'm going to be wearing the same clothes. I thought I should bring that up right out front so that you don't think I was wearing the same outfit two days in a row. Anyway, um so yes, welcome. I know it's been a long time since I've done a video blog and I know a lot of people have been asking me to do it again and um, I was trying to get somebody to do it with me but then um, another one of my friends suggested that I just do it alone because I talk all over everybody else anyway. <laughs> I hope that's not really true. I try to be a good listener. Uh, anyway, um, I'm going to touch on three topics today in this one blog and um, then the next one is going to be about something completely different. But uh, the first thing I'd like to talk about is uh, violence in our schools. And uh, recently, most recently, there was a shooting at Gardena High School uh, about, I'm going to say about three weeks ago. And the thing that stuck out in my mind the most about the incident was obviously that children got shot. But um, the fact that how the parents reacted to the uh, school and the way they handle their security measures. Uh, so that's really what I want to talk about. I will give you a brief recap of what happened. Uh, some kid, they do have metal detectors. It's the campus, Gardena High School has a campus of uh, 3,100 students. They do have metal detectors and they do random backpack checks. Um, this one day, a kid brought a gun to school. He had it, I guess, stuffed between two books and sometimes uh, you know, metal detectors won't pick that up, and um, they didn't uh, do a backpack check on that kid that day because they were random. So he went in, and he, uh, during a class, he took the gun out. Here's the story. He took the gun out to put the safety on, and the gun accidentally went off, and it shot one girl. It was a through-and-through -through injury, so it shot the one girl and then went through her and hit the kid behind her. Um, my understanding is that both kids are doing okay. Uh, but the problem was when they were interviewing, when the news media was interviewing the parents, the, the common theme among the parents was the school is not doing their job. They blamed the school and the security in the school and the teachers. And yes, I'm a little tainted because I used to be a teacher and it is LA Unified. But my problem is this. You know, they're saying they, this is how they said it, some of the parents. There were more than one that said it this way. They force us to send our children to school to get an education, and then they don't protect our children. They force us, say that again, to send our children to school to get an education. Hello? Do you not want your child to get an education? What do you want them to do? You know, you're being forced because... Nobody wants a dumb shit for a kid, as far as I know. Although, after hearing some of these parents, I'm not really sure that's the case. Um, so, you know, they're blaming the school. They said they need to, the school needs to, the security needs to backpack check everyone. This is 3,100 students. They would never get to class. 3,100 students to be backpack checked. That's crazy. Let's get it together, people. How about this? How about this? What a concept that the parents check their kid's backpack before they leave and then drive their little asses to school and make sure they're not doing anything, picking up a gun, sticking it in after. How about that? How about taking some personal responsibility as a parent for your little crotch dumpling? How's that? I have to give, <laughs> sorry, I have to give kudos to uh, my tenant Jason for that one. I never heard the term crotch dumpling before and it just, he said it just cracked me up, so um, so now I use it. But I think this is a good example to use it. Um, so, yeah, why can't you check your own kid's backpack? Why can't you teach your child that it's inappropriate to bring a gun to school? And if the kid is going to bring a gun to school, maybe you should teach him how to use it. Like, I don't know, start with the safety on. Not that he should bring a gun to school, but, you know, Parents need to educate their children as well as the school district and the teachers. And truth is, people say to me, well, you, didn't, you don't even have kids. You don't even know what it's like. 
bullshit, okay? I used to st I used to spend time with the kids more than their parents did. Sometimes six hours a day with these kids. That's more than their parents spend with them in a day. And the kids, because we're not their parents, sometimes feel more comfortable with us and tell us things that, you know, they wouldn't even tell their parents. So I'm not buying the whole, you know, line that I don't have kids so I don't know how hard it is. You know what? Get over it. You already had them, now deal with it and be a good parent. I know there's no manual, I know it's difficult, it's not an easy job, but you know what? Parents have gotten lazy and they're just not doing their job. They're too busy whining and, you know, being tired and, oh, I'm too tired, now my kid's got homework and just not dealing with it. You know what, you had a kid, your kid is your first responsibility, now do the right thing by your child. How's that coming from somebody who didn't have kids? Maybe that's because I understood what having kids meant before I decided to have them. Just a thought, okay? So um, that's my problem with uh, the Gardena high school shooting is that, uh, and that's my problem with most of these blogs that I'm gonna be talking about is that there's no personal responsibility being taken. Um, and we all have choices and we all make our own decisions to have children or whatever it is. Oh yeah, so just being responsible. Uh, the next topic I would like to bring up is uh, earthquake insurance. I recently got a letter in the mail to purchase earthquake insurance and it just, it, it brought me back to when I used to work in the insurance business and it brought me back to, and again, this has to do with personal responsibility too, but um, in 1994 when we had the big earthquake here in California in the Northridge, they call it the Northridge quake, but it affected Simi Valley pretty badly too. Um, I was working in the insurance business and I remember, you know, as soon as there's a big earthquake, all the companies put a moratorium on insurance and they won't let you buy any because ridiculously enough, people wait until there's an earthquake and then they call right after the earthquake going, I need earthquake insurance. Well, it's not going to cover what just happened. So what's the rush, you know? But anyway, that's what would happen. And you know, after a certain amount of time, the insurance companies start uh, selling earthquake insurance again, and usually with some um, more stipulations in the policy about things that aren't covered. So I remember that I was, you know, they started selling earthquake insurance again, and my bosses were kind of pushing us to, when we, whenever we were on the phone with a client, to kind of push the earthquake thing. So I decided to look at the policy, you know, conditions a little bit, you know, just kind of brush over them before I even threw that out there to anybody. And I noticed it said, um, you know, you would get a percentage of your personal property covered, excluding breakables. And I just thought to myself, isn't that why you want earthquake coverage to cover your breakables? Why would I want coverage to cover things that don't break? That's ridiculous. So I said to one of my bosses, like, what's the deal with this? Excluding breakables? What, what, when did they put that wording in? Well, they put it in after that earthquake. But I said, I, what's the point of having it? What's the point of having earthquake insurance? And they said, well, it's at least going to cover the structure of your home. Then I thought about it even further. And I said, well, why do, why do people even need that? During the 94 earthquake and the aftermath, uh, during the aftermath, I should say, um, it wound up that people that did have earthquake insurance, yes, their companies covered it because they had to, but people that didn't have earthquake insurance, FEMA came in and gave them money to take care of whatever their issue was. So the people that bought earthquake insurance the whole time probably were left sitting there going, what? You mean I didn't have to be spending all this money? Because earthquake insurance is expensive. I didn't have to spend all this money all this time the, the federal government would have just come in and said, oops, earthquake, here you go. So basically the people that were being responsible and getting the insurance for themselves were pretty much told you're stupid because you didn't have to do that. We would come in and taken care of you. Uh, the other thing that stunk about that is the people that did have the earthquake insurance and put in the claims probably got canceled the next year because they had such a large amount of uh, claims. So, yeah. So, some, I mean, personal responsibility is important, but you don't always, uh, you're not always acknowledged for it in a good way.